Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's good to have everyone out with us tonight. For visiting with us, we invite you to come back to each time that you can. If you'd like to turn in your song books tonight, our first song will be number 837. 837, I need thee every hour. We'll sing the first and last verses of this song. I need thee every hour, 837. I need thee every eye, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. after this song have wrote in prayer. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us, set us free by the truth you now Bye. 
just want to thank you again for letting us come back and share another portion of your word. I'm so pleased to have Jackie and get them to come back and share another uh, lesson. Just uh, be with them, be with everybody that's uh, represented here, be with the ones that's been mentioned that's sick, um, be with them, be with our orphans and want to send the nurse and all. Can't forget about them. Try to help them in any way you can. Be with their men and women that serve in force and our army and the reserves and stuff. Be with them. Be with their nation. Help the ones doing the law making, make better laws. Let's be with us and keep us safe. Bring us back to the next point of time. Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I'd like to mark a song book. Song invitation this evening will be Do You Know My Jesus? Number 943. That's 943. It's song invitation this evening. Psalm 4, Scripture reading, then our lesson will be Holy, Holy, Holy. It's in the first, second, last verses. Number 47. Holy, Holy, Holy. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded.
draw near to God. That's what we'll be talking about tonight. Got the PowerPoint going there. There she is. Thank you. <laughs> Thoughts from an 11-year-old boy. In 2020, when we was at Spring Valley on fifth Sunday nights, we would let some of our young boys preach. The way we would do it there was after the assembly was over, we would stay and these young boys would get up and preach. One young boy named Corbin. Corbin was always willing and ready to preach. I, I've always loved hearing young boys, young men, especially young boys preach because their hearts are so pure. They've not been corrupted like us as we get older. But their hearts were so pure and and generally, I know someone would help them with their lessons. This young boy, I'm pretty sure it was his mother that helped him with his lessons. But his lesson was about drawing near to God. Can I, can I grow closer to God? Of course, then it was, can I, grow, can I grow closer to God in 2020? This is 2022. But, but when that young man preached that sermon, I thought, one of these days, I'm going to preach that sermon too. And when uh, Doug called and I got to thinking, looking back at some things, I thought, boy, this is the time to preach this sermon. Now, he's got a whole bunch of points, but they're, they're not long points. I'm just going to go through his lesson, not exactly as he preached it. But, but how are you drawing closer and nearer to God in your life? What are you planning to make changes this year? He's going to make some points in here, and I don't know if this was this young boy's thoughts or his mother's thoughts. I think a little bit of both. But about drawing closer to God. How will I draw closer to God in 2022? Number one, how will I improve my Bible study this year? Now, I have never, that I can remember, never heard a young boy preach that they didn't talk something about reading and studying the Bible. You know, that's almost a lost art in our world. I'm afraid. Just, just reading and spending time. Will I make an effort to spend more time in prayer talking to God? Will we? My, my prayer life seems to unfortunately go like this sometimes. It just goes up and down. It goes long and short. Can I find some room to increase my giving? Now when I heard him say this, I thought that must have been his mom. <laughs> what would a young 11-year-old boy be thinking about giving? But maybe he was. That 11-year-old boy is now 13 years old. I wonder if he's began himself to give of allowance or to give of what he had. You know, sometimes I'm not sure that as preachers, we've done a real good job about teaching on giving. I, I, I'm just, I don't think I have. I've tried. But giving is such an important part of our worship. It's a part of our life that we learn to give. That we learn to give as God would want us to give on the first day of the week. As we've been prospered, I've talked to a lot I, um, over the years that has a lot of different thoughts about their giving. But there's one thing for sure I've learned. We cannot outgive God. We should try sometimes. <laughs> we should say, God, I'm going to give more than you do this year. It won't work. But he will bless us so tremendously. And a church must think about its giving. I've probably told you this, but I know it was after we were here that I come up with this philosophy on giving. Not everybody's agreed with me when I talk to them about it, but that's okay because it's my philosophy. I don't give to the church any longer. 
I make sure I give it to God. I give it through the church, but I give it to God. When I give, this, this, this is my giving to God Almighty. Because I've known several times in preaching that when folks would get angry or get mad at the elders or something about the church, sometimes they quit giving. And shame on us if we ever do that. Because my giving's to God. When we've been visiting, we've been giving our contribution. Uh, one day we'll light somewhere and we'll give it there. But I'm glad that that young boy put this number four point. Can I find some room to increase my giving in 2022? Would you think about that in your own life? Your giving. Next. Well, I'm having difficult. The next one is, uh, will I... Will my church attendance improve? Will it? I, now, I don't need to be saying that to you because you're here tonight. And your, your, church, your church attendance is, is what it ought to be. But you know that old disease called COVID has <coughs> hurt the church so much. Boy, it, it's hurt us. And, and I'm not going to say anything to anyone that feel like they shouldn't come because if they feel that way, maybe they shouldn't. But I'm glad that God's blessed us to be able to continue to worship. Yeah. Will you continue to think about your church attendance, but what I'm asking you to do is to talk to others. I think one time I can remember being in a, an assembly where on Sunday night they had more than they had Sunday morning. And it wasn't a special occasion. It was just a really awesome occasion that it happened that way. Some reason everybody decided to come back. I don't think I could live not attending church. I really don't want to. That is the most wonderful thing. When our grandson was growing up and watching him play baseball, was just, I just can't tell you because some of you know. But going to church, being in the assembly was always better. Do I need to fellowship more this year? This is next year, but this year. I guess the worst thing that COVID did to us was stop our fellowship. I will tell you something, that really hurt me. I called up two preachers one day, two preacher friends, and I said, hey, are any of you guys getting together and eating breakfast together or just, just getting together? And he said, Sonny, we can't. And I thought, well, I guess we can't. And it was a time when people wasn't. But I was hungering and thirsting just to get with the church and get with brothers and sisters. Do I need to fellowship more? I love fellowship. Not just fellowship meals. <laughs> I like them, but just getting together with God's people. Well, I make sure to attend. This young boy at that time said, more youth rallies youth activities. In, in my notes, I have all in parentheses, will I make sure to attend all activities of the church? Some have never thought about being a part of the church and the activities, things outside the church. <clears throat> Might be where you can't, and that's understandable. But boy, I enjoy those, I wouldn't say as much as being here in the assembly. But I thought this young boy did a good job with wanting to be in the youth activities. This year, they go to the Tuscumbia Church of Christ now, and this year he's graduated into the youth program. And he is a happy little camper. His mom says we're on the road continually, and he's doing what he preached. Well, I make an effort to get to know my church family better and keep up with those who are sick or going through a tough time. Can I say something? We probably make a D minus here. We probably do. 
That's how our churches are today. That we don't keep up with folks very well. All of us. Now, some of you may raise your hand and say, well, preacher, I do, and I thank you. But will we make an effort to know our church family better and keep up with those who are sick or going through a tough time? I've certainly learned that people go through tough times. Because I've gone through some tough times. We've gone through some tough times. And there's nothing greater than your church family rallying around you. Mount Zion, I, I can't say I know how well y'all do that, but will you make an A plus instead of maybe a D minus? It's hard to do these days. How can I help and serve others better in, let's say now, 2022? Right before I left the house, I was looking at Facebook and a young lady from a congregation on her post, she wrote this. She said, you know, this year, we need to serve one another better. She said, our elders meet every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. She said, in January, I'm going to have them a basket of goodies. Who wants to take the rest of the year? And boy, I'm telling you, under that, they covered the year just real quick. Just, just, just wanting to serve others, whether it's our elders, whether it's our older folks, our younger folks, but how can I help, is what it said. I help, this young boy says, serve others better in this year. Do I need to focus on improving my singing and worship to God? Boy, the song selections have been excellent. Um, and my memory is so short because before I got up here, I was going to say, let's look at part of the verse of the song, and I can't even remember the song. Right now. <laughs> but I wanted to look at that at the end. What was the song you sang before prayer? Do you remember? Now I'm working on your memory. Uh, I need thee every hour. No. Holy, holy, holy. I'll be thinking of it. It's a part of a verse that I thought, I want us to look at that before we leave. And now I've got up here, I didn't write it down because I'm a preacher. I don't care a pen because I can't spell very good. But do we need to focus on improving worship? Can we improve worship? You better believe we can by everybody participating. I love worship. I mentioned that. I can't sing, but I love to try to sing. We can all improve in our worship just by everybody taking part. Now this one I tried to hide, but it's on my outline and I've got to use it anyway. And I should. And Jackie and I are making some small plans to do it. Hopefully there'll be bigger plans. Will I take better care of the body that God gave? I, I've wrecked my body in a lot of ways over the years. Uh, not just weight-wise. But you know, we can serve better when we feel better. We can serve better when, when our body and mind is in tune. Will we do this? Here was his favorite point for me in this lesson, and the next one's a mighty good one, too. And I'm thinking he probably put this in there himself as an 11-year-old boy, knowing him. How can I have more of God and less of me? How can we have more of God? Our world, the world I live in, the world we live in, not the church we live in, but the world, puts emphasis upon self. You know, I'm a, I'm a college football fan. I, I, I love college football. Jackie watches it on Saturday more than I do. But we, we love college football. And I'm so afraid that this thing of paying the college players is going to make it more of an individual sport than a team sport. Did any of you watch any um, pro games today? I didn't see it, but after um, 
Cleveland and whoever they were playing, I fell asleep for a few minutes, and then they were talking. There was a player, I think it was Tampa Bay, I think. But anyway, what the announcer said was, if this guy had caught so many passes in the next little while, he'd get a million dollars. Well, the coach didn't have him throw it to him. And he got upset. And the quarterback was talking to him, and he took off his jersey, he took off his pads, he took off his t-shirt, well, I'm glad he left his pants on, walked across the field doing this. I quit. Just personally, I hate to see anybody lose a million dollars, but uh, it was all about him. And, and that's what happens when we get to be professionals. <laughs> when we become professionals in the church, we won't think about others. We'll just think about self. And how can I have more of God? Can you have so much God in you that you're totally full? I, I think so. In Acts the sixth chapter, they chose seven men. Seven men to take care of the widows that were being neglected. And they said, here's what you choose on these men. Men of good reputation. But the main one was men that are filled with the Holy Spirit. We can be so filled with God in our life that we can be just full and have God only in our life and not think about ourselves. I, I love that point, and, and, and when he made that point, I think I did say amen. It's 2020, the year that I decided, this young boy talking, writing, talking. It's 2020, the year that I decided to try out, now listen to this church, a new role in God's church, like leading singing, leading a prayer, helping with the Lord's table, signing up to help with something uh, that I've never done before. I think maybe we might get a, I'm talking across the board, we might get a D plus again. We get so used to doing what we do that we don't really want to improve anything else. We don't want to do anything else. Would 2022 be the year that you would say to your elders or to Baron or someone and say, hey, I want to get out of my box this year. Too often we live in boxes. I, I get there myself. But boy, wouldn't it be great if everybody wanted to do something for God. You, you know the parable, Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the talents. The parable of the talents is not a parable about abilities that we have. But the parable of the talents is about using what God's given us, whether it be uh, abilities, or whether it be money, or, or, or whether it be just whatever it be, whatever God's given us. And you remember the first two guys, one was given five, one was given two, and they went out and they doubled what they had. And the master in the story, the parable, praised them. And he allowed them to have that double. And then there was that guy that dug in the ground and hid his talent. And sometimes we might do much of the same that we, we know what we can do and this is what we can do and so we just dig and we hide it. Jack and I had a lady to come see us just last week. And she's very concerned about not doing what she should do. Not using what she can do and have, have been doing. There's an age-old adage that's very true. If you don't use it, you lose it. And that's very true in God's kingdom. That we should be able to do more. Not be afraid to do more. Just think what the church would be if every single person said and did more. Wow. And this year, 
Can I decide to try out a new role in God's church? Church, if we don't start teaching and encouraging young men and young families to be elders, we're getting very close to not having elders in the church. And I'm going to tell you something that bothers me. We've got so many churches that don't want elders. They want pastors. I've got a preacher friend. I don't agree with him. I'm glad he's moved out of Lauderdale County, moved to Arkansas. Because he told me himself his church wanted him to be the pastor. They was okay. But they he would be the pastor. And if you ever make Baron the pastor or any other preacher the pastor, I hope the doors close down. That's a terrible thing to say. But truly, we don't have an uprising of leadership in the church. We need people to desire to be leaders in God's church. And sometimes the reason we don't is it's a difficult it's difficult. I can tell you this. People come to me and jumping on me and they say, well, go talk to the elders. Go jump on the elders. I hope I didn't do that. We need leadership and it'll only come if we decide to get out of our box. It's 2020 a year that I'll teach a Bible class or assist someone in teaching. Boy, I'm going to have to be real honest here. I've learned something. Not everybody's teachers. I really wish and think everyone should try, but not everyone's a teacher. I understand that now. I didn't used to understand that. But not everyone is. But please try to see whether you are or not. Back in about 1976, we became Christians in 75. Um, o Calvin Stevenson, uh, elder at Eastwood, he worked out forward, and he come up to me one day. We'd been a Christian maybe a year, a little over a year, and he said he was teaching an eighth grade class. And boy, he was a he was a tough old buster, and I'm telling you, you did homework, with Calvin, didn't you? Cindy can shake her head and say, he was a tough old buster. He was a wonderful man. He was good to me, but boy, he was tough. But he called me. He said, Sonny, I, I want you to come in class with me, and in a year, I'm going to give you the class. I sat in there for a year without hardly saying a word. Then one day, it became mine. And did you know that that class started youth, full-time youth ministry with us? So from that class and things we do with those kids, and it, it just helped us to grow. <clears throat> Encourage those that you think would be a good teacher to teach. And if they, it doesn't work out, that's okay. I've tried to encourage some people to be teachers, and when it was all over, we was glad that they didn't, because not everybody's a teacher, and the Bible teaches us that. But boy, we should try. Here by far was my greatest point in this lesson that Corbin taught. And I'm con confident that Corbin thought of this himself. How can I make sure I keep my heart and mind pure in the new year? How can I make sure how do you make sure of something? You're, you're, you're building something. You make sure it's right. Measurements at height, width, everything. Doing whatever you're doing. How do you make sure you've done it right? How can I make sure that I keep my heart and mind pure in the new year? Paul wrote to the Ephesians says, Guard your hearts. If you don't guard your hearts, someone else will take it over. Maybe I shouldn't tell this, but I will anyway. I've done a lot of weddings. And I did a wedding of a young man and a young girl. And I still think she's the most beautiful bride I've ever seen. 
she was this little girl was beautiful. Um, not down beautiful, I think is the way we used to say it. And as we went out, I turned to that young boy and I said, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't take care of this girl, somebody else will. Today, somebody else is taking care of you. They didn't guard their hearts. They didn't guard their hearts for themselves, and they surely didn't guard their hearts for God. They were both members of the body of Christ. And I know things happen, and I don't want to sound harsh or mean, but we must guard our hearts, because the devil every day. What was the passage that we read a moment ago? Drawing near to God, and he will draw near to you. But what else did it say? I think it said something like this about the devil. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. If we give the devil just a little bit of an open door, he'll pry it open and he'll get in our hearts. I've often wondered all the ins and outs when Jesus is meeting with the disciples and they're eating that last Passover meal. And very shortly it says, and Satan entered Judas' heart. No, he's entered our hearts too. He, he, he's got in our lives too. But this passage said, if we'll submit to God, verse 8 says, draw near to God, but verse 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. The devil can't take no for an answer. He'll run. He'll run like a scared rabbit. But just like an old rabbit, he'll always come back around. When I was a boy, I'd start rabbit hunting with Daddy. I remember the first lesson he taught me about rabbit hunting. When the dogs get on in chasing, he's going to always make a circle back around. And he, it always happened that way. I don't know how many rabbits I was able to take home and eat because he'd come right back around. But all we have to do with the devil again is say no. And it's not easy. Remember what Jesus said to Peter in Acts chapter 26 and there in the garden. And I always picture Jesus when he's speaking to the apostle Peter, he's looking him right in the eyes. And he said, you know, your spirit's willing, you're really wanting to, but your flesh is weak. And that's spoken to all of us. How can I make sure I keep my heart and mind pure in this new year? Now, I want to look at this, then I'm going to change this real quick. This young boy said this. I believe this was fifth Sunday in January, right before the uh, pandemic hit. There were five Sundays in January that year, and five Sundays in March. I believe it was January. And he said... How can I help the Spring Valley Church to grow next year? Talking about this new year he was in in 220. How can I help 11 year old boy? What can you do, boy? You ain't 11 years old. <laughs> boy, he could do a lot and he did. What can I do? Well, I'm just an old retired preacher now. What can I do to help the church? What can you do to help the church, this church, this year? How can I help the Mount Zion Church of Christ to grow? To grow. I'll tell you this. I've learned this, Jimmy, Doug, uh, and Jeff, if he was here. The church doesn't outgrow the leadership. Leadership must always be growing. But the church must always be growing, too, with them. And that's why we need to break these younger men up and middle-aged men up. That they become leaders to help the church to grow. Here's a lost art for me. 
I used to be very good at this. I'm not. Hopefully, maybe this next week I will have a Bible study. I messaged a young boy this morning, not because I was preaching this lesson, because I messaged him several times and said, hey, it's a new year. Why don't we get together and just talk about the Bible? He finished high school last year, excellent young man, but they don't go to church. Well, I attempt to have a Bible study with someone. I used to have a lot of Bible studies with people. I've lost, I've dug in a hole and buried that talent, and I've lost a lot of the ability to do it. And it's my fault. But this year, would you, if you didn't do the Bible study, would you encourage someone to have a Bible study? A husband, a wife, friend, neighbor. And then this is the absolute least we can do. This is the least we can do. Well, I invite people to church. I read a couple years ago, and this was several years ago. I'd say not over five, but I remember several years ago reading, and it said, People do not invite people to church anymore. Will we do that this year? Will I make an effort to tell someone about Jesus in this year? Is the closing song or the invitation song, Do You Know My Jesus? Is that what you sing? <coughs> do you? And if you do, would you tell somebody else? Will 2020 be the year that I make every effort to make sure that I am right with God? Whether it be becoming a Christian or changing something in my life that needs to be changed for me to be right. That comes from the heart of an 11-year-old boy. Just pure as gold. Oh, he had some mischievousness in him, of course. He had some aggravation in him, of course. But he was 11 years old, full of energy. But he said to us, the church, that he would make every effort to make sure that he's right with God. I don't think Corbin's obeyed the gospel yet. He's 13. I don't believe he has, but I know he's active in the youth group and his family. They're extremely faithful in all things with the church. But how does this relate to you or to me? To make every effort to be right with God. We're not anybody's judge, and there's something I began saying in my sermons about two years ago. I'm not going to judge anybody any longer. I hope to teach them, hope to show them what the Bible says, but God is the ultimate ju judge. Regardless of what we think, it's God that judges. <coughs> But we must make sure in our life that if we need to change something that needs to be changed, we need to do it now. The next two points I put in there. <laughs> I went beyond his lesson and I put just these two points in there. Will 2022 be the year that as a church we plan to work and work the plan? Did you know there's really only two kinds of churches? Churches that plan a work and work the plan are churches that just have church. <laughs> you know, most denominational, charismatic, and other churches and many congregations of the Church of Christ never make plans. We visited the Tuscumbia Church of Christ the other night. Well, actually, we was at a funeral there. Take that back. I was at a, I was a funeral there. And a lady that just placed membership there came up to me, and they went to Spring Valley with us. In 2020, we lost half the congregation in Spring Valley. Um, we went from 32 children down to five, and about three months later, a family with three left went down from 27 children to two children. But a little bit before that, there were 32 children from Field Spring down. Congregation about 100 to 110. That was fun. But about right there in the middle of the pandemic, I'm going to say it's probably June or July, 
Everybody left. They didn't leave mad. <laughs> they just left. Most of them went to Tuscumbia. I'm not hard at Tuscumbia. I'm glad they're over there. We failed. I say we because I was a preacher there. But we failed to make a plan and work a plan. And we had this troop of young families. Every young family in the congregation had good jobs. Every young family had good jobs, very progressive in life, not progressive in church, but very progressive in life. And they wanted to do things with their children, and the only answer they ever got was no. One family left. You know what a snowball effect is? <laughs> it's hard. Before that, half the congregation had left. And a congregation that had babies crying every Sunday become a dead stick. That's horrible. That's just horrible. There's two kinds of congregations. Congregations that plan a work and work a plan. And congregations that just have a church. Last point of this evening. For 2022 be the year I, you, work to make your church family a better family. Family. I have told so many people <laughs> about the families here at Mount Zion. Y'all know what being family is because you just keep marrying into families. And it's amazing to me. It's a beautiful thing. I've always loved it. That peace, people buy a plot of ground and, and cluster on it. That, to me, that's a wonderful concept. I wish, I wish I knew how to do that years ago. You know what family is. Family's all we've got. God's family. That's all we have. Can 2022 be the year that I, that you, work to make your church family a better family? You can't be a better church until you're a better family. And you know how much I love the family. That's very valid. As Corbin said in his sermon, whether it's becoming a Christian, or whether it's just making things right. Always at the first of the year is a wonderful time, if there's a need, to do that. But we can all do better this year because it's all we got. Did you know since the late 80s, early 90s, there has been zero growth in the churches of Christ. Back in the 40s and 50s, we know about, some of the young people might not know about, but we know about it, and, and our problems being, we wanted to stay in the 40s and 50s because it was a good place to be. But because of change happening, we can't do that. But in the 40s and 50s, the churches of Christ we were the fastest growing religious group in the world. Did you know, I'm not saying this to be ugly, derogatory toward anybody, but did you know that groups like the Jehovah's Witness and Mormons have outgrown us by leaps and bounds? And we laugh at those folks. We ought to be the people that the world laughs at. Well, look at them people knocking on everybody's door and interrupting everybody's supper. We don't do those things. I don't do those things well either. So I'm not fussing at you, but just saying, let's be a better family to be a better church. And it begins with me. And it begins with you. If there's anyone needs or wants to respond in any way, but I'll make you a promise. You'll all make a response. 
to where I don't like what he said or don't care about what he said or yes, I'm going to be a better Christian this year just sitting right where you are. But if anyone needs prayers of the church or being immersed into Christ for the forgiveness of sins, would you come as we stand in the same place? Have you a heart that's weary, tending a load of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the burden you bear? Do you know?